Lord Mackay, the highest law lord in the land, finds himself on trial at the mercy of a tiny band of religious fundamentalists, a splinter group of the Free Presbyterians. His crime is attending a requiem mass and the funeral of a close friend. The Southern Presbytery decision of 4th November 1988 takes a strong stance. The Presbytery expresses its disapproval at the conduct of Lord Mackay of Clashfern in attending a requiem mass for Lord Russell of Kelloa. The church professes as part of its Christian belief that the mass is idolatrous worship and the Pope of Rome is that antichrist that exalteth himself against Christ and all that is called God. The presbytery also notes that Lord Mackay expresses no regret for his attendance at this requiem mass, nor is he willing to undertake not to be present on any similar occasion in the future. I'm not a prophet. The judgment is that Lord Mackay of Clashfern be suspended from the exercise of the functions of an elder of the church for a period of six months. But this is only one side of a story. Supporters of Mackay far outnumber his opponents. We wish to make a number of things clear. In the past, in spite of differences of view regarding attendance at Roman Catholic funerals, many members and office bearers have done so without criticism or discipline and without any qualms of conscience. The case is still in progress and the final word has by no means been said. Emphatically, there is another view held by a very large number of supporters of Lord Mackay who dispute the charge. There was a dissent amongst the presbytery and also an appeal by the court session, my court session from Edinburgh, to the Synod, so that the, that particular part of the decision does not take effect until the Synod considers the matter. The Synod usually meets in May of uh, this like, uh, year coming, May uh, 19, uh, 1989. We asked several Free Presbyterian ministers and colleagues to comment on Lord Mackay's situation, but there appeared to be a conspiracy of silence, along with claims that the matter was sub judice. Who, who are the Free Presbyterians? In 1843, the Church of Scotland split with a third of the ministers going to the more evangelical Free Church, the We Freeds. And in 1893, that church split, with the small group becoming the Free Presbyterians, the We We Freeds. While the vast majority of the Protestant population in England belong to the Church of England, the Church of Scotland is completely separate. It comprises 90% of the Protestant population in Scotland, and of the remaining 10%, only a tiny number, about 6,000, of Free Presbyterians. What distinguishes the FP Church is that it felt that other faiths were becoming too slack in their interpretation of the Bible, and in 1893, it broke away. I think they are a, a, a very private kind of um, church, which delights in the fact that it does not give tuppence what the world thinks of it. The true Church of Scotland is the Free Presbyterian Church. Now, that may sound rather arrogant that I should sit here and that I should say to you that my church is the Church of Scotland. But I think any impartial historian who would research the matter, look into it impartially, would be bound to conclude that we are the Church of Scotland. With a small group of religious extremists threatening to bring the Lord Chancellor to his knees, have his religious principles remained unchanged? We have voted content 207, not content 257, so they're not content heavy. I believe that the principles uh, of the Free Presbyterian Church uh, of Scotland manifest uh, the most uh, tender love uh, that has ever been described. Uh, and uh, they, uh, of course, uh, make a very important distinction between good and evil, but the uh, uh, Lord Jesus, who is the center uh, of biblical Christianity, uh, draws uh, people by his love uh, from uh, their sins to himself. So, so I wouldn't regard um, these principles as stern principles uh, at all, although I, uh, I accept that, uh, as you say, some people uh, see them in that light. 
If you have an organisation like, like the Free Presbyterian Church, um, which has got these very harsh rules, um, and harsh rules which are dressed up in theology, um, then if you live by the sword, you die by it. This very small group have brought this action with encouragement, and it is known that they've had encouragement and help from those in senior positions in the church. And that definitely strengthens the theory that there are those who are out to get Lord Mackay or to bring him low to cut down the tall oak. He is uh, uh, a very private person, uh, and his beliefs are personal to him, and he does not seek to influence others, and that's, I think, a source of enormous respect for him. He is a man of uh, extraordinary good manners. He's also, of course, incredibly intelligent. And his intelligence and his modesty frequently deceive people. And I certainly uh, feel uh, greatly strengthened uh, by the knowledge uh, that whatever may divide us, uh, there may be union uh, in prayer. Although no official statements have been made, Mackay supporters and opponents are becoming polarized. His supporters circulated a petition which was submitted to the Synod hearing. It asks that the Synod should take note of the deep distress and sorrow which the decision caused. Congregations in the Western Isles and at St. Jude's in Glasgow were advised not to sign it. At the same time, a booklet, Free Presbyterians and the Requiem Mass, was published. Although it doesn't mention the Mackay case, the coincidence of its appearance only weeks before the hearing cannot be ignored. Lord Mackay is not the first leading figure to be reprimanded for attending a requiem mass. In 1908, the Free Presbyterian magazine carried an article called King Edward's Sin, which referred to the great sin committed by our king in attending a requiem mass. The Southern Presbytery protested against King George V and Queen Mary's attendance at a requiem mass for the Empress Eugenie. Lloyd George was reminded that he shouldn't countenance a Roman Catholic service by attending a requiem mass. In 1957, when Harold Macmillan attended a requiem mass, the FP magazine commented that the action of the Prime Minister is to be deplored. When Sir Alec Douglas Hume attended a requiem mass for President Kennedy, the FP magazine stated that he had set an evil example to Her Majesty's subjects. Why such antagonism to the mass? According to the Free Presbyterians, the mass is idolatrous and blasphemous. The second commandment forbids any form of idolatry, and so condemns the worship of the wafer as the son of God. The papal mass is the most blasphemous form of religious worship that Satan ever invented, an offense unto God and destructive to the souls of men. A requiem mass is undiluted Romanism of the most offensive type to a genuine Protestant. Attendance at requiem masses calls for confession, repentance, and humiliation. For those in high office to be present at idolatrous worship brings guilt on the whole nation. But judgment is to be brought down on Lord Mackay, a judgment which could divide and damage a church which Lord Mackay strongly supports. What is the verdict likely to be? Well, my information, having spoken to various uh, folk in and outside the Free Presbyterian Church, is that the issue is very much in the balance, and that he may very well find himself suspended uh, completely, or in the long term, uh, have a sentence uh, endorsed by the Synod. I don't want to pretend to be a prophet on this. I, I, I just feel that there is no guarantee that this sentence is going to be uh, revoked. It may very well be allowed to stand. We all would have expected, I think, uh, some uh, attack for us Christian convictions and principles. Uh, but we have an attack by the church itself. Uh, Bombs the mind. What positive things can the Free Presbyterian Church offer a world like ours as we approach the year 2000? Well, I believe the principles of.